Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to this week's A Sportsman's Life. I am loading up the old pickup here, getting ready to go down to the beautiful Lake Tawakety, located about an hour east of Dallas. Now, I'm going to join my buddy, Tony Pennybaker, Thunder Cove Guide Service down there. Tony has been catching tons and tons of channel catfish that are away from a pound and a half to three pounds, just good eaters using punch bait. Now, Larry Wysoon and Jeff, they're going to be with us a little bit later in the show, but right now, let's load up and head down to Tawakany and join up with Tony down there at Thunder Cove Guide Service on the dock. So hang with me. Let's go have some fun. So we got a 3 8 weight. I got a little spacer, man. You can use anything there. Those beads, little orange beads you buy, that works fine. I cut these out of bobbers. You know, they're cheap. So I use them. About a number six treble. This here is big marvs, but it's in a sure shot bucket. So I use both. I use sure shot and I use big marvs. And what you do, you take, hold your line, take your stick, put it on your hook, you mash it down in there, you just need to kind of cover it up and then pull it out slowly and and that's all you need to catch a channel cat. That's it. Pretty simple you, you stuff. You don't need to try to pat a pound of it on there. It just takes a little bit. Drop it down. When you feel a little peck, set the hook. Tony, that's that's a pretty simple formula. Pretty simple. And I use these ultralight rigs and I like them pretty good, you know. The, the tip of that rod is so important to a soft tip. It is. That it's, you can actually, really I'll tell you what, let's just, let me just kind of show them the tip of this rod here. Let me back up a little bit. Now I'm going to, I've actually got a hold of the line. This thing is you don't know folks how, how important that is. That fish may, he may, he may jerk it down or more than likely he's going to pick it up and you're going to, you're going to see and feel something like that. And sometimes you'll feel a, feels like somebody may just thumped your pole. When you feel that, set the hook. Set the hook, exactly And then so. other times, just like Luke's describing, you may see your pole just bend a little, or actually, the weight will have it. It's just suspended Loaded. Weight. It'll have it loaded. loaded. It's a little bit of a bend, and sometimes you'll see your pole go up like that. Yes. And when you do, set the hook. That fish That's has fish come up. coming up with it, and you'll get him if you'll do it. And now these poles are so sensitive, you see, oh yeah, these GX2 ugly sticks are really good. Uh, we've caught 15, 20 pound carp and buffalo on them. For this kind of fishing, you can't beat it. Well, well, we'll put these rascals to work. What you say, Tony? Let's go out there and catch a couple of limits and uh, come back and show them what we can. There you go. Mr. Tony, that's a pile of fish, buddy. Sure is. They were biting pretty good today, weren't they? They were biting real good. And you know, these little ones, when I was a kid, that's the only, we would skin these, my dad would. The smaller oh, yeah. ones, yeah. Nothing and, any better than that right there. Fried you, whole. You bet, skint. Gutted, headed, skint. You bet, Nick. Got you some scores down his side there. Man, that's some good eating. It's about as good as it gets, it's buddy. And, that, uh, and there's a jillion of these in Tawakany, and if you like eating them like that, well, we can sure catch them for you. You better there's believe a lot it. of them in there. And but, you know, the thing is, and, and then the big ones too, the filet. Well, we got about 
it usually runs about 50 50. we got two limits of fish here and half of them are fillet size half of them are cutters or, or skinners yeah uh, you know we can throw the skinners back and continue to catch bigger ones or or we can just keep them on you bet and we did what well, we only had to throw back what two or three fish uh, that no were more too than, little to, no to than, even be a skinner exactly no more than three so they're running a decent size you know well, let's we want to make sure and get your number out there tony thunder cove guide service this is my buddy tony pennybaker folks you've, you've seen him well you know we're fishing for blue catfish but now summertime is the time of plenty and uh how do they call you tony just call me at 903-474-3078 anytime and come yeah. come get you some of this right <laughs> come get some. this morning got some help got my son-in-law lance and grandson josh we're gonna go hang a a feeder here in a little bit and put some corn in one of them that I've already got. This is some property that I just leased uh, this past year, but it's property that I grew up hunting ever since I've been a little kid until I left to go to college and then other people started hunting it. But mostly, uh, as you'll see, as we walk through some of this stuff, is yopon and cedar and all kinds of different oaks. And we've been in a monsoon for the last, oh, pretty much month or two. It's middle of July, and never in my life have I seen things quite so green or this much water that's just kind of hanging around. Good thing about having help is that I don't have to carry the feed or the additional feeder as well, too. Set this feeder up about oh, about two weeks ago, and just the rain started. It hadn't had a chance to get back in, but we're going to put a little feed in here and start feeding this one. This is an area that we're going to set up a ground blind in, kind of in the central part. It gets really, really thick all the way around this thing. And when I came in here this spring earlier and looked to see for tracks, there were lots of deer tracks right in here and a few hog tracks as well too. So I'm going to set this feeder up and uh, we'll start feeding here. Okay. Hello folks. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We are in the midst of refurbishing a feeder. Uh, what you guys want to do, uh, if you've got feeders out there, uh, the deer lease, whatever, and you're not quite sure they work, or you've noticed a little bit of moisture inside your barrel, you need to refurb these things. Now this particular uh, feeder I've had out there for several years, and I've noticed a couple of rust spots in it, a couple of little screws that have backed out, some holes in there. So we decided we're gonna refurb this one. We're gonna put a brand new Ultramatic feeder on this but before we do that we want to make sure we've got all the holes filled in and then we're going to use what's called flex seal you've probably seen advertisements uh, as seen on tv uh, commercials and we're going to spray this and seal this completely uh, so there is no moisture ability to get into that feeder and ruin the corn so this is something that's really important to do. Don't wait till late September to start messing with this stuff. Get this stuff done early so when uh, the season rolls around, you already have your feeders up and running and they're reliable. So we're gonna start here by, obviously we took off the old uh, motor timer battery and we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna get our brand new one out. But before we put that on here, we're gonna sand this barrel down. We're gonna plug the holes. We're gonna patch any uh, rust spots that are might might be in it and again we're going to put flex seal from the inside and out on this barrel and uh, we'll have a much better uh, a feeder once we get it set up out there so stay tuned I'm going to show you exactly how what I'm doing here and how I get this all done and uh, if you follow these easy steps here your feeder can be reliable for many many years to come so let's get started okay just wanted to give you a little bit of a close-up what we got going on here uh, these were where the other feeder was mounted and I've already put screws in and what I'm using is I'm using these screws that have a little rubber gasket and they seal very well. They're self-tapping sheet metal type screws and so any hole that I have in this barrel, there's some on the side from where solar panels were mounted, again here where the, the, the motor was mounted. We're going to fill all those in so we've got one last one here. And I'm going to put this one in this hole here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to make sure that these are all sealed very well with silicone. And then we're going to spray it with the flex seal to make darn sure this is all uh, 
perfectly uh, sealed up. We don't want any moisture to get into that barrel. So we've got our holes filled. One of the first things you want to do is you want to take a wire brush and just kind of clean this out because what we're going to do then, again, we're going to put silicone on each one of these and then we're going to flex seal it and then we'll, once that dries, we'll come back and then, then we'll start mounting our, uh, our feeder, our timer, so on and so forth. But just, you really want to kind of make sure you got all this cleaned up. You don't want any loose debris. Now I've got old, you can see here, I've got old silicone on there from a prior um, repair on this feeder. And we want to get as much of that off as we can because we're going to reseal it again. And there's no reason to have all of this old stuff on there. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to get a putty knife and try to scrape some of this off. So All of the old material is coming off very, very easily. We just want to get that off and then we'll start by putting all fresh stuff on here. But again, the most important thing is to keep the moisture out of your barrel. You don't want any cracks, any holes, any anything that would allow moisture in. Uh, a second tip I might give you is make sure you're using a lid that is covers the entire top of the barrel and that no moisture or wind or anything can blow that and allow moisture or rain to get into your barrel. Because the minute you have moisture in your barrel, you've got problems. All right, we've got the majority of the uh, loose, an old silicone off of the end of this barrel, the bottom side of this barrel. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to silicone what we have left here and just to make sure that these are well sealed. You don't want any moisture to get into the, any of these. The old ones here that are still in there, they still have pretty good silicone around them. I'm going to go around them again. And then what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to give this a chance to dry. Let that silicone dry good before we start to spray. And again, like I said, we're going to do the inside of the barrel just like we did the outside of the barrel. Because we don't want any moisture getting in this feeder at all. Moisture is not your friend when it comes to feeders. That is the quickest way to find your feeder not working. All right, let's go around and do the funnel here and get this good and sealed. Once again, we don't want any ability to have any moisture get inside this barrel. It's critical. There we go. Okay, we're going to let this dry. And we're going to come back and then we're going to start with our uh, flex seal. We're going to get this thing sealed. Once we have the bottom done, we'll get the, we'll get the inside, we'll get the, the sides, everything. We're going to make sure this is completely airtight, sealed, so when I put corn in it, that corn stays dry. Well, as you can see, folks, I've given it about six hours and this is very, very dry. So we're all good with the silicone. We've got all our holes patched, and we are ready to put some flex seal on the bottom side of our feeder here. And this will really seal it nicely. Again, you want to keep out all moisture so your corn doesn't spoil. All right. Here we go.
right, as you can see, we've got the uh, flex seal completely covering the entire barrel. So anything that was a potential hole or a way for moisture to get in is no longer. So we've taken care of that. Our next step is going to be let this dry. You've got to let this dry for a couple of days. I really like to get that, that to where it's very, very adhered to that barrel before you put any corn in it. But uh, we'll give her we'll give her a couple days sitting out in the sun here, and then uh, we're gonna come back. We're gonna hook up that Ultramatic feeder, folks. Stay tuned. That's that's a great feeder. You're gonna see how that thing works once we get this thing set up. So. Glad you can join me on this little journey of refurbishing a feeder. So it's, this is good stuff to do. You definitely want to do this well before deer season. You know what that is? You guessed it. It's a coon cage. These go on feeders to keep coons out. You don't want coons getting into your feeders and spinning the plates and stealing all your corn. So this is no longer needed. Trash. Why? Ultramatic feeders, folks. These feeders are, they're amazing, is what they are. This feeder actually, by centrifugal force, will, as it spins, this plate will, will actually go down as it spins and then comes right back up and butts up against the funnel where your corn is. And there's no way for an animal to get its paw in there and get corn out of there. So, they've solved the problem. Ultramatic feeders have solved the problem. There is no longer a need for a coon cage. This particular model has the solar panel mounted to it, has the timer inside, it is ready to go. These are fantastic. Take a look at that folks. All set to go. All I gotta do is hook a battery up, hook this to the, the barrel, and you are ready to um, Set your feeder up, throw some corn in it, and you'd be good to go. So I highly recommend you check out Automatic Feeders. This is what we're going to put on our uh, our refurb barrel, and uh, we'll be set to go. So stay tuned. We we'll have our barrel action. completed. We have refurbished this barrel, and now it's time to put on our Ultramatic feeder, and we're going to get this thing set up and ready to go. As you'll see here, I've got um, these little self-tapping sheet metal screws, and they have a rubber washer on them that's what you want to use uh, that'll seal this nice and tight and when I put my four screws in here it doesn't hurt to go back and put a little bit of um, uh, silicone on there just to seal that as well we want to make sure all of this is sealed so there is no ability for moisture to get in now we want to set our motor exactly where you want it on this feeder so when you screw this thing down it is exactly where you want it to be dead center you want to make sure that the funnel of that barrel is coming right into the dead center of the plate underneath here so let's get this thing screwed on there we'll flip this thing over we'll take a look at it double checking here just to make sure we are absolutely where we want to be and it looks like we are good to go here we go screw in double check once again we'll go on this side and put one in over here and then we'll be good to go two more to go and then we'll be ready one more What you want Beautiful. to do is you want to let this barrel sit outside for several days and get the stickiness off of this barrel, right? The inside, the outside, everything. If it's sticky and you put corn in it, so let's say you paint this thing with the flex seal and you pour a bunch of corn in it 24 hours later, it's going to stick to the inside of this, this barrel and it's going to kind of mess it up. You want to give it several days. I let this sit out for five days. It's been sitting outside for five days and completely dry. There is no stickiness to this barrel whatsoever inside and or out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a battery in the Ultramatic feeder. We're going to set the timer. Let's take a look at how this thing works. All right, here we go. We've got our timer. 
we've got our brand new battery sitting out here and our connections. So we're going to connect and let me re-emphasize a brand new battery. When I use a feeder like this and I refurbish one, I always like to put a fresh battery in the feeder. So here we go. All right, our battery's hooked up, we're all ready to go. We've got the timer set, so really what I wanna show you is how this Ultramatic feeder works. The cool thing about this feeder is the fact that, as I indicated earlier, you do not need a coon cage. The plate here will actually drop down when it spins, throwing corn, and then it pushes right back up against your, your funnel and animals can't get in there and pull corn out. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this thing works. Watch that spinner plate and we'll see how this thing works. Notice how it came down and went right back up. That is awesome. Ultramatic feeders, folks, these things are awesome. Okay, folks, there you have it. Our barrel has been refurbished, took a little time, it's not a lot of work, but it's well worth it. You can take an old barrel like this. This thing has been out at the ranch probably, I don't know, 12 to 15 years, and it's still good. But it, it was time to refurbish this thing. It had some holes in it. We had some moisture building up inside this barrel, and that is never a good thing. So taking the time to scrub it down with a wire brush, clean it all off, and then use Flex Seal. And again, that Flex Seal will seal this thing Use a little bit of silicone on each screw that you use. And I tell you what, this thing will be ready for many more years of use. Uh, we've got our Ultramatic feeder put on. Once again, check those out folks, Ultramatic feeders. They're fantastic. No coon cage is needed for these things. And man, I tell you what, all we have to do is dump some corn in this thing and we are ready to go. So we look forward to seeing you here again on A Sportsman's Life. And a special thanks to these fine sponsors. Air Force Air Guns, b, b Charcoal, Dallas Safari Club, Hornaday, Pyramid Air, Taurus Firearms, Sightmark, Smokin' Tex, Snap Lock Hunting Blinds, TRHP Outdoors, and Striper Express.